All right, in this last video, we're gonna look at properties and use the properties of these definite integrals. So property number one is generally a favorite. If you integrate from A to A, so if these two numbers match, that it's gonna equal zero. Because you're doing the area from A to A, so it's really just the area of a line, which is zero. Second property is if you notice that the bounds are flip-flopped, so the smaller number is at the top, and the bigger ones underneath, then you can flip the order as long as you make it negative out in front. The third one, which you can do, and this one's kind of cool to, um, every once in a while it comes into play, especially next semester, hint, hint. Uh, you can break an integral up So you can go from A to C of f of x dx plus the integral from C to B of that same function. And that's provided uh, that C is somewhere between uh, A and B. Okay, and then uh, the next two properties are kind of just like derivatives. Uh, if you've got a constant in there, you can pull it out to the front. Uh, if you have more than one term on the inside, you can integrate each term separately uh, and then add or subtract them and get uh, at the end. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, so we're just going to evaluate them based off of these properties up here. So we've defined these three integrals, we just have to use it. So part A, the integral from 6 to 6 of f of x, well, that's like property number 1. The bounds match, so that's going to give you a 0. For B, you're going from 6 to 3. Uh-oh, that's out of order. So flip them and make a negative on the outside. And we know when you're going from three to six, it's equal to a negative two. So the negative of a negative two is two. All right, from zero to six, hmm. How are we gonna go from zero to six? We have from zero to three, and then three to six. Oh, oh hey, look at that, they, they match, the threes. So I can take this this integral here that they gave me and I can break it apart. So from zero to three, it was eight. From three to six, it was negative two. So I get a total of six. All right, part D, uh, I can pull that five out. So it stays out there, and then the integral, it has a value of negative 2. So I get a total of negative 10. All right, moving on. The integral, integral from 3 to 6 of x squared minus f of x dx. So I can integrate each one on their own. and then just subtract them. So for the x squared, it was 63 minus a negative two, so 65. All right, now this last one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna split it. So this one right here from zero to three, that was eight. And then this one, the six, that one's gonna equal 18. You're going, well, how, do, how did you know that? It's like, this is not in any of these values. Well, uh -huh. if you remember from the previous video, when it asked us to figure out these values, we could use a graph. 
Well, the graph of six, that's just a horizontal line at six, and I'm going from zero to three. So the area of that rectangle is 18. So that's how I knew it was 18. So 26. Okay, so let's look at this last example. So the graph consists of line segments in a semicircle as shown and evaluate these. All right, so from zero to three of this. So zero to three, so zero to three. Now my curve is under here. So I, it didn't say find the area, it said get the definite integral. So the definite integral can be positive or negative. If it was area, area is always gonna be positive. So if it's just the definite integral, it can be negative. So on this one, since it's underneath, it is gonna be negative. So it's that quarter circle. So a quarter of pi r squared, so negative nine pi over four. All right, the integral from three to seven so three to seven, now it's the area of that big triangle and it's on top, so it'll be positive. So one half times the base of four and then the height of three. So we get six. Okay, let's look at this one here from negative five to three. So I'm going all the way from negative five all the way over to here. So if you notice the whole area is underneath the x-axis, so everything should come out as negative. So the area of this triangle combined with this uh, area of the circle is gonna give me a negative something. So it's negative uh, one half base times height, so two, three for the height and then I'm just gonna make a minus because I know it's negative uh, one half because it's half the circle uh, times pi times the radius squared so I get negative three minus nine pi over two <clears throat> okay so for D you just got to get the area of all of these. This stuff would be negative. Anything above would be positive and just combine them. Uh, now for E, it's the absolute value of this graph. Well, whoops. I almost knocked the camera over. The absolute value, it makes everything positive. So it's gonna take anything that's underneath the x-axis and it's gonna make it a positive. So if we go from negative five to seven, so negative five all the way over to here, I'm just combining the area of each of these three shapes, but everything's gonna end up being positive. So I already went from negative five to three. That was this, just make it positive. And then the area of this triangle over here, we know what that is. We did that earlier. That was six. So nine plus nine pi over two. Okay, and then this one, we can split it again. So this right here, um, if we would have done it earlier, that comes out as three minus nine pi over two. If you did the area of this triangle combined with the circle and they're negative combined with that right, uh, triangle up here, that's three minus nine pi over two. Now, now you have to deal with the two. Well, how did we do that before? Oh yeah, it's graph. You're just going from negative five all the way over to seven. So the area of this, 
that base is 12, height is 2, so we end up with 27 minus 9 pi over 2. All right, so that'll do it for section 5.3. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions on any of this stuff whatsoever. Um, so just try the homework, um, go over the notes, fill in the, the ones that uh, we didn't do in the video, uh, and let me know if you need some help.